Hi, welcome back to Neural Data Science. I'm Professor Aaron Newman. Today we're going to be learning about making subplots with Matplotlib. The question we're addressing is how can I make a figure containing more than one plot? Our learning objectives are to generate figures with subplots using object-oriented plotting in Matplotlib, and to modify properties of figure subplots, such as size and layout. A great feature of Matplotlib is that you can create a single figure with multiple panels, which we call subplots. A great feature of Matplotlib is that you can create a single figure with multiple panels or subplots. We'll get lots of practice doing this in the section on single unit data. As you might have intuited, the plt.subplots function can be used to create a figure with multiple subplots. Its default is to create a single subplot, but we can create more subplots by passing arguments indicating the number of rows and columns of subplots we want. Think about subplots as being on a 2D grid. For example, to create a figure with one row and two columns of subplots, we would use this syntax, fig, comma, axs equals plt.subplots, and then in parentheses as the arguments to plt.subplots, n rows equals 1, and n calls equals 2. So in other words, the number of rows is 1, and the number of columns is 2. Actually, you can omit the n rows equals and n calls equals quargs, and just use the second syntax I show here. So again, fig, comma, axs equals plt.subplots, 1, comma, 2. Matplotlib assumes that the first two arguments are the number of rows and columns, respectively, in the subplot. It's a little more compact to write it this way, a little less transparent, but you're welcome to use either format. But they both work fine. Note that in the above examples, we've replaced AX with AXS. This is a convention, not a requirement, because remember the fig and AXS variable names that you give here can be anything you want. Fig and AX or AXS are just the conventions. But the idea here is that by using AXS, you're communicating to yourself, to anybody else viewing your code, that you have multiple axes and not just a single axis. Um, so in other words, the figure is sort of the overall frame that you're gonna plot into, and then the individual axes are the subplots or different graphs or plots that you put within that figure. Let's try running the following code, which will generate a figure with two subplots, and then we'll print out what the AXS object contains. Because remember, fig and AXS are both Python objects. Fig is an object that references the whole figure, and AXS, when we do subplots, has a number of axes objects within it that we can index. Okay, so let's look at this code and type it in. So we start, as always, by importing matplotlib.pyplot as plt, and then we'll define x equals range 0 to 10, and y is the same. And then fig comma axs equals plt dot subplots in rows will be explicit here equals one and calls equals two and then let's print what is axs now note that all I did was I created plot dot subplots I created the subplots I didn't actually draw x and y into them yet we'll build on this code in a minute so you can see here that the axs object looks like a list, actually it's a NumPy array, and it contains two axes subplot objects in it. And we'll be able to index those with the kind of typical Python indexing you're used to by now. So the first one would be zero, the second one would be one. So let's run part of that code again. We don't need to redefine X and Y, but now we'll actually generate a plot with X and Y in them. So fig comma axs equals plt.subplots in rows equals one, in calls equals two, then axs square bracket zero. So now we're indexing the first axes object within the plot. So that's going to be the top left axes within the figure. Now, of course, we only have one row, so it's basically just the left plot in this case. So axs zero dot plot x comma y. So we're using object-oriented plotting as we covered in the last lesson. We're referencing the axes object index zero, running the plot method on that object, and giving it the arguments x and y. And then by convention, to get clean output, we do plt.show. There you see it. We have the x versus y perfect correlation line in the first plot. To draw into the second subplot, we would use axs1. So let's do that. 
And just for variety, we're going to generate a different set of y values. So we're going to say y2 equals list reversed range. So we've got a nested command here. So we're running range 10, which will generate a range of values from 0 up to, but not including 10. We're going to apply the reversed function to it, which, as you might intuit, reverses the order of that range. So now it will go from 9 down to 0. And we have to turn that into a list, because remember, a range is not uh, actually a set of values. It's a way of generating them. And once we've run reversed on that generator, Python doesn't really know what to do with it for a plot. So we have to explicitly make it a list. I didn't expect you to know that already. That's why I'm explaining it. Fig comma axs equals plt dot subplots in rows equals one in calls equals two and then axs square bracket zero dot plot x comma y so that's the same plot that we put in the left subplot before but now we add axs square bracket one dot plot x comma y2 so that y2 that we just created and then of course plt.show there you have it we now have two different plots subplots with two different lines one with a perfect positive correlation one with a perfect negative correlation so since each of those axes is a separate object we can modify properties of each subplot separately using their indices we can also modify properties of the entire figure using fig.methods. So in other words, we can modify or apply methods to the figure object if we want to affect the whole figure, add like a title across the entire figure. And then we use methods on the axes objects if we want to modify individual subplots separately. All right, so let's try this. Let's create a new subplot. So fig comma axs equals plt dot subplots. And I'm just going to say one, two, since by now you know that we give it rows and then columns. And then I will give it axs square bracket zero dot plot x and y, axs one dot plot x and y two. So all of this is the same as above. But now we're going to, let's see, oh, I'm not following along here. So we're going to do axs square bracket zero dot set underscore title. That one's going to be positive correlation. And then axs one dot set title negative correlation. And then we're going to add a title to the entire figure. And for this, it's fig dot subtitle. Subtitle. How you doing? Two types of perfect correlations. And I agree, fig.subtitle is kind of a strange, non-intuitive name for a command. But of course, if you just Google matplotlib figure add title, you'll get some help that tells you that subtitle is the appropriate method to run. And finally, plt.show. So you can see positive correlation was the axis zero title. That's on the left. Negative correlation is the title we assigned to axs one and then subtitle for the whole figure, two types of perfect correlations. So you can see how those get laid out. Okay, so that's what we might call a 1D subplot because we have one dimension, essentially. We have a row with two columns, but we can easily expand that to 2D subplots where we have both rows and columns. So let's do that first, just by using two rows, but one column, and then we'll move into the next example, which has two rows and three columns. So fig, comma axs equals plt dot subplots and we'll be explicit again in rows equals two and calls equals one and our first subplot axs zero dot plot x comma y axs zero dot set title positive correlation now we'll plot into axs1, and you can see the indexing is the same in both cases, right? So the first subplot is 0, the second subplot is 1, even though now they're two different rows instead of two different columns. Dot plot x comma y2, axs square bracket 1, set title, negative correlation, 
And I won't worry about a subtitle now, but just plt.show, because the main point here is just to show what happens when we do two rows and one column. And you can see that. Now, one thing that we'll address later is the shape of these plots, because the figure defines the shape of the plot, and so the subplots are basically scaled to fit within the figure space. So in both this example of two rows and the above example of two columns, the overall figure size is the same, but because we're fitting in two columns, the plots tend to be sort of narrow and then tall, whereas when we plot two rows, they tend to be short and wide. We can control that, and again, we'll come to that later. But just to say that's, that's why they look different from each other, and don't worry, there is a way to control that. Okay, so our next example is to use both rows and columns and then see how we index these. So fig comma axs equals plt dot subplots. Now n rows equals two, and n calls equals three. And I'm not gonna plot into all six of these subplots, I'm just gonna plot into two again. The main thing to know here is that now, when we have both rows and columns, we want to use two-dimensional indexing. Kind of like when you're using .lock or .iloc with pandas, you give it a row index and then a comma and then a column index. So again, AXS square bracket. So if we want to plot to the top left subplot, that's row zero comma column zero dot plot x comma y. And likewise, AXS zero comma zero dot set title positive correlation and then axs square bracket zero comma one so remember it's rows comma columns so this will be row zero so the first row second column with a one dot plot x comma y two axs square bracket zero comma one dot set title negative correlation. And of course, finally, plt.show. There you have it. So 0, 0, 0, 1. And by extension, the third one in the first row would be 0, 2. And then in the second row, this would be 1, 0, 1, 1, and 1, 2 for the bottom right subplot. All right, so that's how you create subplots and draw into them. Now, how do we modify them more to, to do some formatting? So I mentioned the figure size before, and you can see the example here that's going to show you how to modify the figure size. So basically when you create the figure with plt.subplots, you add an extra quarg, which is fig size equals, and then you give it a pair of values, which are the width and the height of the plot. Uh, you can give them in square brackets or you can give them in parentheses. I tend to use the square brackets. So here we're defining 5 and 10 as the figure size. Usually you end up playing around with this a little bit to get it looking right and getting those dimensions the way you want. Another issue is sometimes when you have subplots, you get overlap. In the textbook version of this lesson, you can actually see an example of that in the above plot here, where negative correlation, the title for the second plot, overlaps with the axis labels of the top plot. CoCalc seems to render things a little better, so we don't have to worry about that here. But there is an easy way to avoid it, which is a command called plt.tightlayout. And that will just cause matplotlib to sort of move things around so they don't overlap. So it's a good idea to get into the practice of using tight layout, or at least being aware that if you do get overlapping items in one of your plots, there's a, an easy way to fix that using that tight layout command. Okay, so let's see how that all works together. So we're going to say fig comma axs equals plt.subplots n rows equals 2, n calls equals 3, oh, no, 1, fig size equals 5, and then 10. And then our first subplot, axs0, dot plot x, y, axs0, set title, perfect correlation, axs1 dot plot xy2, axs1 dot set title, a perfect negative correlation, and then finally plt dot tight layout 
and plt.show. And there you see, now we have two subplots. They're square because we modified figure size to be five wide and 10 high. So essentially twice as tall as it is wide. And we don't have any overlap between elements of our figures. Five and 10 is approximate. And this looks pretty square, but in fact, five, 10 is the whole figure size, including titles and that sort of thing. So if we had a subtitle for our whole figure, that would take up some space within that range of 10 that we have. So each of our subplots would be squished down a little bit. So again, trial and error with those fig size parameters will help you get something looking exactly the way you want. All right, so that brings us to the end of today's lesson. As a summary, using plt.subplots, we can generate figures containing multiple subplots. The number of rows and columns of subplots in a figure is set by the n rows and n calls quargs, or alternatively, just providing the number of rows and columns as the first arguments to plt.subplots. When creating a figure with subplots, it's good practice to assign the result to fig comma axs rather than fig comma ax to reflect the fact that the axes object is now containing multiple subplots, multiple axes that you can index. The different axes of a subplot are accessed, such as for drawing into or modifying properties using indexing, like axx0, if you have a single row and multiple columns, or a single column and multiple rows. If the figure's layout is two-dimensional, however, so you have both more than one row and more than one column, then two-dimensional indexing is required. So for example, axs square bracket zero comma one. The figure's overall size is set by the fig size equals quarg to plt.subplots, and we can avoid overlapping elements in subplots by running plt.tightlayout right before plt.show. That's it for today. Thanks for watching. Remember to like and subscribe, and we'll see you next time.